Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. We're here once again with the Warriors of Chaos and Colex Sun Eater, going to be taking on the forces of Bretonia, so let's go ahead and jump straight to the army composition. We've got Colex here, a Chaos Sorcerer Lore of Shadows. We've got Pit of Shades uh, instead of the Penumbral Pendulum, simply because Pit of Shades is going to be better against Cavalry. Uh, we've also got Enfeebling Foe course for that a single single target debuff unit of dragon ogres and some chaos poison warhounds to support them and in terms of infantry we've gone nice and wide we've got four chaos warriors with halberds a single forsaken in the center and four marauders up front we've also got two marauder horsemen with throwing axes currently doing a bit of scouting and skirmishing and that's about it for my force let's go ahead and take my opponents here uh, he's got King Luan Leonkur on a Pegasus, interestingly enough. He's still got great combat stats, a very scary duelist, a uh, Lion Shield, Sword of Corone, all that jazz. He's backed up by a unit of Royal Hippogriff Knights. So kind of separating Luan from that AP and Terror, very interesting. You don't get to see these guys too much, but I'm interested to see how they perform here. We've got three units of... Foot Squires with two men at arms with pole arms. Sorry, make that three. Four men at arms with pole arms. Three units of peasant archers. And two knights of the realm, one out on this side, and the other is currently sweeping in. So let's go ahead and kick the battle into full gear and we'll watch what happens. Just doing a little bit of skirmishing with these uh, Marauder Horsemen, trying to bait an unfavorable engagement for my opponent. So we're going to kind of just, uh, you know, poke and prod as my forces advance up and over the hill. We're going to take this high ground position and while my opponent's busy, you know, maneuvering his archers and trying to protect him and so on. It's going to allow us to come up and take this high ground position and, and attack from a very commanding uh, terrain. It is worth noting, and I have done some testing, I don't know have any have any exact numbers, but getting a downhill charge, especially, uh, will give you a huge advantage um, in terms of uh, the outcome of melee. So. Uh, definitely, if you can seize a high ground like this early on in the battle, it's going to be advantageous. Uh, Luin and his knights coming down are uh, going to be landing on top of these Marauder Horsemen, but it's a little bit of a misplay. Here comes uh, Big Daddy Kolek here going to be getting in there and uh, not actually delivering any attack animations, unfortunately. Uh, Luin is uh, pinned in by the horses, but Kolek, for whatever reason, is just not able to get any attack animations, maybe because he's not in base contact there, like there's models in between them. But he is finally going to get an attack animation that actually pushes Luhan out, so we did a little bit of damage there, but unfortunately the Hound's just not quite able to get there in time. Uh, that being said, we're just going to continue to press up the pipe here. We've got uh, Marauder Horseman, again, just kind of maneuvering around in the back lines, being annoying, and um, just kind of probing for weaknesses more than anything. Um, honestly, a charge in here to these unbraced uh, peasant bowmen would be very nice, but we're busy getting mainline charges off the board. We're going to get the uh, Marauders soaking in on the Foot Squires because they'll trade pretty cost effectively. Foot Squires have pretty poor combat stats. Uh, they do have a little bit of armor and anti infantry, but the Marauders will trade relatively cost effectively there, whereas the Chaos Halberds will trade less cost effectively. Forsaken are going to just destroy Foot Squires um, with their heavy weapon strength great melee attack as well uh, the, the foot squires will be able to do some damage back don't don't get me wrong but uh, it's definitely going to go to the forsaken there over on this side you can see knights of the realm have taken out some of those marauder horsemen but are being pinned in by the chaos warriors with halberds and more so very nice got uh enfeebling foe and looks like some healing earth blood going off from the uh damsel lore of life there so very nice for my opponent keeping lewin and these uh, more importantly these royal hippogriff knights very very healthy we honestly haven't done too much damage to him yet but here come the dragon ogres and the uh, hounds also coming in here applying that poison and the dragon ogres are going to be a very good counter unit to these uh these royal hippogriff knights with their anti-large armor piercing they've got their huge uh maces which i think looks super cool um but yeah, the terror is going to be a bit of an issue, the terror from the, those Royal Hippogriff Knights. Uh, while the Bretonian leadership is still holding pretty solid, not being terrified away by Kolek. But uh, you can see those Marauders did lose, but they traded reasonably cost-effectively, and now the Halberds are coming in when they're a little bit weakened. We're getting these Hounds with, combining with some Halberds to try and drag down these Knights of the Realm on the far side. The other unit of Knights of the Realm, just kind of chilling in the back, doesn't really have too many great targets at the moment. But uh, again, the Halberds just kind of being kept in reserve here because I don't want to engage them straight onto the Foot Squires. It's not going to be a great engagement for me. Uh, we were able to turn around and do a ton of damage with those Dragon Ogres to those Royal Hippogriff Knights. So uh, they've almost racked up an XP Chevron from doing that work. 
Uh, Lewin has got it back up in the air and is just kind of regenerating up here. Um, but honestly, all these uh, men at arms with pole arms are definitely going to do a lot of damage. You can see a beautiful pit of shades going down here. Uh, getting a lot of these knights of the realm, dealing quite a bit of damage to them. Uh, they had been relatively healthy up until that point, but just took a ton of damage. And you can see it did tie up a few unit models there as well. Did a little bit of damage to my marauders, but also just routed this unit to men at arms with pole arms. So overall, I would say that was pretty decent, pretty costly investment. Would have been better on something like Grail Knights, but since my opponent didn't bring any elite to our cavalry, I figured we needed to use it on something. Kolek has taken a lot of damage, while Luan Leonker is able to regenerate the damage that he's taken, so it's turning into a little bit of a rough engagement. Uh, I don't want to take this too hard here with Luan, um, because I obviously can't regenerate, but a really nice Lord of the Storm going down there, doing a lot of damage to those uh, peasants. We've also got that enfeebling foe on Luan himself, so that he's not going to be as good against uh, Kolek, but still... Fighting in this, on top of this big blob of my opponent's halberds is not what I want to be doing. So I'm going to bring in these uh, Dragon Ogres to try and do some extra damage here and then pull uh, Kolek up and around so he's not taking too much damage there. My opponent's doing a good job just keeping up that focus fire with all the peasants that he can. He wants to focus on Luin as much as possible. Or sorry, not Luin. Uh, Kolek here as much as possible. But uh, yeah, Kolek coming in for another timing push, trying to get a charge in on Lewin, but just doesn't have the mass to push through, and unfortunately not really, kind of awkwardly not getting attack animations there. Finally he gets an attack animation, puts a pretty good beating on Lewin, but again, it's not going to be great for me to stay in combat for too long there. Uh, meanwhile, over on this side, my Marauder is being terrified away. Uh, we still got some halberds hanging around. We were able to chase off that one unit of Knights of the Realm. There's one other unit of the Knights of the Realm that we're going to disengage with Kolak and then go re-engage on that unit of Knights of the Realm there. But uh, unfortunately, he doesn't get the best swipe. Actually misses this attack completely. So uh, great job, Kolak. But uh, we still got the Dragon Ogres relatively healthy. We pulled them around to help deal with uh, some of these Hippogriff Knights that were on the ground. We did just dip down a unit model there, so they're down to only one unit model. Uh, we've got the Sorcerer hitting up on this damsel here obviously the sorcerer having much heavier armor is going to win this fight he also has much better combat stats chaos sorcerers are actually some of the best uh, casters in the game just uh, combat stats wise they're pretty scary characters definitely got to respect them but um that one hippogriff knight coming down and saving that damsel chasing off the uh, the chaos sorcerer there but uh, these dragon ogres holding the line here while we get Luin in a very pitched engagement up on the hill. We've got him fighting out with Kolek. Uh, Kolek's very, very low though. Only 1,000 hit points and another hit for about 300 damage there from Luin. Um, but uh, these, these halberds are in here supporting. And we are going to be able to break Luin's leadership here. Kolek is still alive. Uh, Luin, unfortunately due to the low mass of uh, Pegasus, Pegasi. <laughs> his Pegasus has low mass, so he's not going to be able to pull out of this engagement. Kolek is going to route temporarily, but he'll be back, and you can see that's finally swung the balance power decisively in my favor. It had been a very close battle up until that point, but uh, yeah, just pulling away now with these Dragon Ogres here and the Shadow Sorcerer. Not really wanting to commit too much to this engagement until my infantry can fix them in place, and we'll try and get more of a rear charge engagement here. Uh, likewise, we want to chase off this Damsel uh, because she's, you know, additional leadership support. Lewin was just taken down, I believe, by these uh, Alberts here. I don't see him anywhere, but um, maybe he got away. Oh, nope, there he is. So uh, King Lewin, unfortunately, has been taken down, and uh, with his passing, the forces of Bretonia are going to generally want to rout here. So we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit through this cleanup phase as we're mostly just uh, chasing down routing peasants at this point, using the hounds and the dragon ogres and other mobility units to just kind of wipe them out. So... Well played to my opponent. It was a super fun battle. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. A very close battle, all things considered. Closer than I thought it was going to be. Man, that regrowth and those uh, those Hippogriff Knights, they performed better than I expected. I, I had, I've I forgotten that they got some minor buffs in Total War Warhammer 2. I still don't think they're great. Uh, maybe if they had anti-large, they would be really good. Like, really, really good. But uh, they're decent, but at the end of the day, they just kind of just got outclassed by those Dragon Ogres. And Dragon Ogres are a cheaper unit, um, and they're just able to come in and put the beating on these Royal Hippogriff Knights. So a little bit rough there. Other than that, uh, the infantry fight was a little bit of a wash. I mean, both sides took major casualties outside of me having a couple halberds there towards the end. Kolek himself did a lot of the heavy lifting, 102 kills as well as helping to take down Lewin there. Uh, 35 kills on the Chaos Sorcerer Lore of Shadows with that Pit of Shades and an Enfeebling Foe is always nice. So 
decent there. Uh, Marauders, honestly, were misplayed a little bit, but 51 kills on the Hounds and an XP Chevron is great. If you can get, get these guys chasing routing units or chasing knights that are trying to pull away from like a halberd or something, they can be super, super cost effective, and they're very much a staple of uh, all of the different Chaos factions. So very fun stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I'm keeping it coming with more Total War Warhammer 2 content every single day. So stay tuned for more and we'll see you next time.